The head of research at the financial derivatives company Damilola Kibami joins us now to discuss the burning economic issues at the domestic commodities market. Good morning, Damilola. Good morning, it's BC. It's good you finally made it here yes. after <laughs> wading through hours of traffic. <laughs> All right, now let's begin with oil prices. Now, yes. they're actually doing a bit better this morning at about $38 per barrel, but that market has been quite volatile due to the lockdowns across Europe, you know, caused by the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic. But then, what's the implication of this uh, on Nigeria, bearing in mind that our oil benchmark for the proposed 2021 budget is at $40 per barrel. Well, for Nigeria, that depends heavily on oil. Um, what it means is like right now, um, with oil prices at 38, so there's a negative headroom of about $2 if you compare to the 2021 budget um, benchmark of $40 per barrel. So that means that um, obviously um, re revenue projections are going to be affected. And bear in mind that even oil price is just part of the equation. You also have to look at the oil production. And Nigeria's oil production currently is around 1.4 million barrels in compliance with its OPEC quota and the budget benchmark for production is about 1.8 million barrels. So definitely if you look at that with lower oil prices and oil production sharply lower, the revenue and projections are flawed. And if oil prices continue to remain bearish, because if you look at the factors that play right now, the price depression factors are intensifying. And if this continues, it's definitely going to lead to um, a possibility of a revision of the 2021 budget because you have to now consider the wider fiscal deficit and ex imbalances that would occur as a result of this depletion in oil revenue. Now let's talk about its effect on an external reserves. Now uh, reserves are still hovering around $35 billion and then in the Naira. Uh, what sort of fiscal and monetary response are we likely to expect to close uh, the fourth quarter on a strong note? Well, right now, um, into, let's start from the monetary policy angle. We know that the MPC is going to meet um, in like the next three weeks this month. And right now, um, prior to this, in the, the MPC meeting that held in September, we know that um, the central bank actually um, reduced um, interest rates con contrary to market expectations. Well, what consensus view right now is most likely they're going to maintain status quo, at least to close the end of the year. So what we're going to see is that the NPR may be left, um, all the monetary parameters may be left at current um, state. But however, the CBN still has other monetary policy tools at its disposal. So for instance, the CRR debates are there. We have the OMO auctions to, to maintain or manage liquidity. And in terms of the Forex also, as you're managing liquidity, you're also indirectly going to be addressing the Forex issues. And bear in mind that the CBN is still selling or still has its frequent um, Forex interventions to the banks at the retail market and it's also selling to the BDC. So this obviously would help to an extent to manage um, exchange rate pressures. But bear in mind that because Forex receipts are depleting, we just talked about oil prices, it's still going to be a major issue. And we've seen that manufacturers, most of them are now using a blended rate because of the inevitability of Forex. So they're com combining both the um, IFX rate with the power market rate just to, has to be able to meet or make ends meet. And the impact of that is because Nigeria is a highly import dependent economy. So you're going to see prices of imported items increase because the yeah. country's import bill is going to increase. And if you even go to stores now with everything that's been happening from COVID to the NSAS protests to the looting that occurred afterwards, you're already beginning to see shortages. If you go to a lot of stores right now, you see that shelves are some, for some items are practically um, empty. So that, that, that is what is at play right now. But in terms of monetary policy, I think the, the CBA is just going to maintain status quo. In terms of physical policy, right now, the, what the government is going to be looking at or what they're focusing on is the budget 2021. And if market realities fall short of what has been projected, we might see a revision. We know that happened severally this year with several um, budget um, revisions made and all that. So the, the thing is that policy should be dynamic. It shouldn't be static and the um, policy authorities would have to move in tandem with whatever is happening in the market. Now where are we in terms of commodity prices and availability? Of course you talked about uh, the shelves nearing empty, talking yeah. about imported items, but what about domestic commodities 
uh, looking at the fallout of the NSAS protests and everything is just gradually returning to normal. Mm. But where are we in that aspect? Yes, yeah, so we've seen prices actually increase. Um, the protest and the curfew that was imposed and the looting really affected um, the markets. We know commodities such as flour, rice, tomatoes, all recording price increases. Onions actually recorded an 100% increase from 40,000 Naira a bag to 80,000 Naira That's a bag. Huge. And the reason the marketers are given is because of the inability to move um, their goods around due to the curfews. Also, we know that there was a lot of disruption that occurred. So this is what is affecting the market. And bear in mind that the, the harvest season has ended, so we're slowly inching into the planting season. So all these factors are at play. And we're seeing consumers goods also likely going to be affected the most. I know that we're also moving to the festive season. Definitely demand this Christmas period won't be as much as prior years because we know that livelihoods have been affected, consumer spending is down, so obviously demand is not going to be as much as prior years. And also the manufacturers that are going to meet this demand, they're going to plan their inventory levels based on the available demand. So if demand has declined, you're going to see that supply and inventory levels too are going to be looked into or revised downwards, coupled with other issues they're facing, such as forex issues, lending rates, despite the fact that interest rates on the deposit side are really low, lending rates have been sticky downwards. So these are some of the issues manufacturers are facing and coupled with weak consumer demand. So it, it's this, these are some of the things that are affecting consumer prices. And we're going to see inflation most likely even head towards 15% towards October, November. Wow, because I was just going to ask that, will the weak consumer demand actually lead to some form of reduction in the prices or decline in the prices? So it would taper the impact. So for instance, if the um, due to the supply issues and whatever you, if that would have led to, because um, cost prices are increasing, that should have led to a sharp increase in consumer prices. But because there is weak demand, so it should taper the, the, the impact of the increase. So if we're expecting maybe, for instance, given a rough estimate of maybe a 1% to 2 or 3% increase in inflation, but because of weak demand, you, the impact may be reduced about a 0.75% um, um, impact that will be felt on consumer prices. But there is still, inflation definitely is going to be higher than what we experienced last year. So we just have to keep our fingers crossed and yes. see what happens. Now, we seem not to be done with electricity tariffs as uh, discos begin the implementation of the revised tariff. But do you think Nigerians will just take it as it comes owing to the uh, free prepaid meters distribution to consumers under the mass metering scheme? Well, these um, initiatives, if I can call them that, that the government has put in place, the six million um, free meters and then the revised tariffs, they're all good on paper. But then again, how are they going to be implemented? Let's start, for instance, the six million meters. What is the criteria for distribution? Is there like a quota or is there, is there, are there some requirements or is it just anybody that would have access to it? Also, the revised tariff is based on um, the five bands five categories based on the amount, the hours of power supply to um, consumers in different locations. So how is that going to be computed? Is it on an annual basis? Is it on a monthly average? So for instance, let's say Isheri, on a typical day, you, you receive maybe 24 hours of light and then something happens, maybe due to um, power um, system downtime or maybe there's a local fault and you have two hours of supply. Does that move you from band A to band C? I mean, how does it work? So there's still a lot of ambiguity and I think that is what Nigerian consumers are all concerned about that, look, there has to be some clarity as to how these um, initiatives are going to be implemented. But down the line, yes, it's a good idea, it's a um, good initiative where the government is trying to bridge the metering gap and also end estimated billing, because that's what consumers are all complaining about, the fact that they are paying exorbitant prices for amount of power that if you, if you were connected to the grid or they had prepaid meters, they wouldn't be paying as much. So I think that is the main issue. And obviously, Nigerians would welcome the meters. They're even willing to pay for the meters just as long as there is also available power supply. Now, Damilola, you'll agree with me that it's been quite a turbulent uh, year, especially for Nigeria, both having to deal with COVID and then now the NSAS protests and then the aftermath of the yeah. NSAS protests. But when you look at the CBN consumer confidence for the fourth quarter, it's showing positive signs. So what's actually driving this optimism? Well, based on the CBN's report, um, the survey that they conducted, they're saying that um, consumers are more um, expected of um, increased livelihoods in Q4 because we know that pre the 
um, NSAS protest and the aftermath, a lot of um, companies were reopening. And even since then, at least this week now, we know that schools have reopened, businesses are, are, are back online. So it's that um, expectation of increased activity level that um, consumers are positive or, ex or, or have um, optimism, uh, they're optimistic about what is going to happen in Q4. But then again, I would still issue a note of caution because with everything that has happened, this protest and the aftermath occurred in October, the first month of the last quarter of the year, and the impact was severe. So definitely it's going to affect a lot of companies, especially consumer goods, because they are the ones in the manufacturing and trade um, business. And bear in mind, these two sectors contracted in Q2. So it's unlikely that they're going to return to positive territory for the rest of the quarter. But hopefully, if COVID um, situation improves next year, the vaccine is made more widely available, global trade picks up, demand picks up, we should see in um, 2021 a better year compared to 2020. Let's keep hope alive now. Yes. But then we're not seeing a reflection on the purchase and managers index as uh, October witnessed a fall to 51.3 points. Are we going to see a slight pickup either this month or maybe in December? Well, fingers crossed, we should see um, an improvement bearing any unexpected um, events that could occur that would dampen market sentiment and affect um, business levels. Why the FBN PMI declined was, oh, and it was for the month of October. We, we've talked about it, all the issues that happened. So November, December, we should see a pickup all things being equal and bear in mind typically around this period even early october is when you see shops start to place in their orders for christmas so you start to see a lot of christmas um, decorations you start to see people st um, shopping uh, towards um, events end of year activities and whatever so if those things happen this year and bear in mind they will be controlled to an extent because there are still curfews in place or restriction measures in place to guide or pr protect um, Nigerians against the spread of COVID. So obviously this would be dampening factors to the level of activity in November, December. But all things being equal, it should be an improvement over October. Well, just before you go, let's just touch on oil once more. Of course, uh, voting in the US election is yes. just a matter of hours away. So how is this going to affect oil prices? Very, forward? very good question. Depending on the outcome of the election, for instance, if it's a Joe Biden win, we know that he is all for renewables and the shift to cleaner energy. And he is also most likely going to revisit the Iranian nuclear deal. So that means that if he wins, Iran's oil may, be, may come back into the market and the market is already oversaturated. So we're going to see increased um, supply. Also, he's already initiated the um, point that he may ban fracking, especially on US federal lands. That also would affect US oil production. So looking at his own energy reforms, it appears bearish for oil prices. But if it's a Donald Trump win, we know that status quo is going to, con is going to continue. But more importantly is the outcome. If the outcome is disputed, that could lead a sell-off in the market and it would affect oil prices and even the financial markets generally. We'll see how everything goes. Head of research at the FDC, Damila Lakibami, thank you for coming on. Thank the you, BC.